these shiny new uprights aren't much good to us unless we can connect them to the car. So it's time to make some suspension arms. Uh, there's going to be one main lateral arm and then a tow link, adjustable tow link going back to that with the upright here. On the chassis side, going to run these uh, nylophane bushes. They're from a Commodore Panhard rod. And on the upright end, this spherical bearing. And there are the two housings to suit. So we just want to get our bar like this and connect the two together. Simple. To give me some chance of uh, getting it to the right size and symmetrical, uh, I've created a little jig to make up the two arms, one for each side of the car. Uh, you might have recognised this as the same plate that we bolted the, upper, uh, the upright jig to. So uh, that's one housing there, one housing there. This bit of bar, I just want to fish mouth that nicely to meet up with those two bushes and then we'll weld it together. Cue the notch master once again, not just good for roll cages. Uh, we want an 18.2 degree cut, so I've set it up for that. Uh, unfortunately, this is the closest hole saw I've got to the size of that bush. Uh, it's going to be a bit big, but uh, I think we'll be able to make it work. So like I said, not exactly the right size cutter or hole saw, but uh, I think we'll be able to make that work. So to get the length, I've cut a bit of welding rod to too short, that's the wrong one, to this outside length. And then I'll use that to transfer onto our tube and cut the opposing fish mouth. I'd uh, love to know what percentage of welding rod actually gets used for welding and not just a uh, very convenient supply of straight wire. Not sure if you can see it, but that's our mark from the, uh, the welding rod gauge length. Uh, let's try and uh, cut this too short. All right, clearly I've made that too long. That hole saw is absolutely rooted. Come on. It's not going to do it. That's better. So the magic welding wire has uh, done the trick and uh, that fits really nicely. No grinding required. While I'm feeling a whole lot of hole saw love, I think I'll knock up the second one. So the bottom arms have welded up nicely onto the tow links. Here's one I prepared earlier. That will go onto there and then the rod end will connect to that to make up the bottom arm. Uh, pretty simple little bracket, just cut out of some RHS and turned up these little reinforcement spaces and welded them in. Uh, I didn't weld all the way around because that would have just introduced you know, a stress concentrator for no real benefit, as much fun as it is welding a, uh, a nice 90 degree chamfer like that. Uh, before I weld them on there, I just want to get some clearance for the rod end, so uh, I think I might do that on the mill. So clearance slots have come up nice. <clears throat> So the idea is to weld this onto here, but to do that, I need to uh, relieve these brackets out. So that's next on the list. I can't come up with any sneaky way of doing it, so I think it's just going to be an old school grinder method. Might go get a beer first though.
Yeah, I'll call that passable. So just as a bit of a sanity check, I've mocked up everything on the bench here, uh, and it all looks to be good. There's, uh, this rod end's very close to the end of its angle limit, but I, I knew that um, when I was designing it, and that's one of the reasons this bracket has to sit so far out off this arm. Uh, but it all looks good. Um, it, CAD seems to be following reality for a change. So now I just need to work out a way to jig up these brackets to get them all into line and then I can weld those on. Smash them through it. I know it looks a bit dodgy, but I think I've got everything lined up and square. It's starting to get tricky because all the weld beads are getting in the way and I'm losing a lot of reference faces, but confident enough to tack it together and weld it up. The other thing is I, I'm terrified I'm gonna end up making two left hand arms or two right hand arms, but pretty sure at the moment they're completely symmetrical. So before I move on to the final arm, that sort of trailing arm, uh, I want to make the chassis mount for the main arm um, so that I can bolt it all to the car and check for clearances. Uh, the chassis mount is going to be very similar to what's on the car currently, except I want mine to be removable so that I can shim out or in the bracket and adjust the camber. I think I'll use this brand new bit of angle iron I bought specifically for the job and definitely didn't find in the bottom of my scrap bin. Plan is to cut some sections out, uh, drill some holes for the pivot bolts, uh, generally give it a bit of a clean up, make a small jig and weld it all together. simple bracket that I managed to overcomplicate significantly, but it's come up pretty nicely. Uh, I've machined the sides uh, parallel to get a really nice fit and uh, also machined the bottom flat and square as well. Probably didn't need to do it, but did it because I could. And uh, it all fits in there nicely. So uh, time for a trial fit on the vehicle. So this is the bracket we are replacing, and also replacing this arm and this arm. Uh, so yeah, pretty simple job of slicing that off with the angle grinder and uh, cleaning it all up, ready to accept our new bolt-on brackets. While I'm here, I'll try and get rid of these weird little plugs that were there for the old engine mount. Uh, they don't look like much fun to, uh, to remove. I might try and get the hole saw in there and see if I can cut the center out to just leave the weld bead there, but we'll see how we go. Time to get noisy. Bad. Good.
All right, final check. I've thrown the back of the car on, and it's, uh, it's nice to see a complete car in the workshop, at least from the outside, because uh, I wanted to make sure or check how centered the wheel was inside the guard. Uh, I've moved the, the wishbone pickup point back a little bit just to uh, get it where I think it's about even front to rear. Uh, and I've yeah, moved, moved it back about eight mil from the uh, original location, uh, which is kind of a good thing because any additional wheelbase we can get in the car is a bonus to the stability, I think. Um, but pretty happy with its location now. Uh, I've also spaced the wheel out about eight mil from the face of the brakes and we've still got plenty of guard clearance there. So uh, all looking good. But unfortunately, enough of this good clean fun, Time to get back to the grinder. Uh, on the home stretch now, uh, the last arm is the, the long, longitudinal arm. Uh, it's going to have this Nile Thane bush at one end. So I've machined up a couple of rings to accept the bush. And that needs to connect to this 31.8 diameter tube. Unfortunately, the tube, as you can see, is too big for the width of that bush. Uh, now I could have just squashed the end of that tube down, which would have taken me about 10 minutes, but instead I thought I'd waste three hours and machine up these little fittings uh, that will insert into the tube eventually and then gives me a nice surface to weld that that ring to. Um, yeah, probably would have been fine just to squash the tube, but like I said, this took three hours, so it was definitely worth doing, and I managed to break another end mill. Awesome. Anyway, little rudimentary jig here. Uh, Going to weld these up, and then I can work out uh, what length of tube we need. Nearly there. They were a massive pain in the ass to make, but they have come up rather nicely. Let's see if they fit. So now all we need is a bit of tube from here to here. It looks like it needs to be 423 millimetres. This is the easiest part of the whole job, so I'm definitely going to stuff it up. And just like that, the uh, rear suspension is done. Well done for now. I'm obviously running out of the correct uh, fasteners, but I've also decided I want to go to M14 for the rod ends on the tow link and on the trailing arm. I've got the space for them. They're heaps stronger, not much heavier. Uh, the M14 tube insert suits that diameter of tube on the trailing arm uh, and if I run uh, the reducer spaces on the M14 rod end I can uh, get more angle out of the rod end before it binds. Not that I think it's going to but uh, a little bit of extra clearance never hurt anyone. So there you go. Now I've got the suspension back in the car. I can look at uh, sorting out those drive shafts. Hence the engine being back in there. But uh, I think that deserves a beer. Cheers.